Hey guys, welcome to another session of Bugs and Brews. My name is Jake. Today, Clark and I decided to bust out the ye old whiskey. It's a little cold outside, so it's keeping us nice and warm. But moving forward, today's fly, we'll be doing the Hippie Stomper, which is a fantastic attractor dry fly. We really enjoy it for that dry dropper style of fishing. You can fish it single, but uh, it does really well with a little bit of weight below it. Um, this fly was created down in South America by Andrew Grios which he then brought to the Western Slope when guiding on the Gunnison River. Found a lot of success uh, for Western Trout, therefore it, that pattern really stuck. Um, this fly is composed of, you know, foam, hackle, rubber legs, a little bit of synthetic material, etc. So for me and a lot of guys that fish this fly, it's kind of like the perfect culmination for a great like stone fly or small little hopper pattern. Um, unfortunately in November, Andrew suffered from a pretty horrible stroke, which he's currently recovering for. Um, looks like all the updates and things we've been hearing, he's been getting a lot better. So that's always great to hear. We will have a link in our description for his GoFundMe page. So any help is greatly appreciated. He's a fantastic tire, a great guide and an overall awesome human being. So any help goes a long way. Um, definitely check that out and we'll get into the fly. All right, so getting into the fly, what I have here in the vise is a TMC 3761, which is indeed a nymph or wet fly hook, but you know, once you got all those materials on there, then she'll float for you. So I've got that in the jaw, and for thread, I've got UTC 70 denier in a black. So what I will do is I'm not gonna start my thread directly behind the eye. I don't wanna crowd the eye. Um, that tends to happen, especially with dries. So I'm going to start about a third of a shank down from the eye, lock my thread in there. And the first material that we'll be using is a little bit of moose hair for the tail. Why we really like moose hair is, you know, it's got a little bit of a hollow effect to it. So it actually wants to, you know, help your fly float. And that's always nice, especially when you're tying a fly that's designed to float on the surface. So. I'm going to pull that hair out of my stacker there, kind of get my proportions looking right. If I had to put a number on fibers, sheesh, I don't know, anywhere between 12 and 20, I would say, but, you know, make it as bushy or as sparse as you like. And for the length of the tail, I'm going to go for about half a shank length. So I'm going to do a little bit of measuring here with my finger. Once I'm happy with how it looks, kind of address it to the top of that shank catch it with a nice thread wrap and then just torque that down all the way to the bend of the hook or just short of the bend rather. And once you have that tied in, progress with your thread back up just to where you started. And then I'm going to take my scissors and cut out the remaining fibers that are there. This fly has a little bit going on, so just, you know, be mindful when you're tying all these materials in. Really try to keep that front portion of that hook bare, so when you do go to finish your fly, then you're not running into any issues. So my next material, or rather my next two materials, is going to be some foam. This is one millimeter foam that we get from Wapsi. Um, today's colorway is going to be in that black and red. So, I don't know, maybe a little bit more beetly than every, anything, but you can uh, tie it based on the forage and whatever system you're fishing. So, now that I've got my thread hanging, basically just where I started it, I'm going to take my black foam first, lock it there, and walk it all the way back to my tail. And if this is your first time tying with foam, um, you know, one thing that you can actually really do is mat that foam down with just simple thread wraps. It's pretty amazing how flat that stuff can get for you. Um, so once I got my black portion tied in, progress back forward and I will do the exact same with the red strip. And to walk my foam down, I kind of like to do open spiral wraps and then afterwards go in with tighter wraps and that helps with matting the foam down, keeping it nice and tight. 
good luck getting this foam to come off this hook. And then once you've got a pretty solid base there, I'm just gonna hang my thread, just, just about hanging maybe with the point of the hook. And I'm gonna go in with my next material, which is a holographic red tinsel. Feel free to use a holographic red flashaboo as well, whatever you've got. They're both pretty much the same thing. Um, and this is just gonna give that underbody a little bit of color, a little bit of flash. So as with most patterns, I'm gonna tie this in on my side of the hook, walk it down to where my last thread wraps are on my foam, and now bring my thread back up just about to where all that foam and whatnot has ended, or rather started for us. Um, now I'm gonna take this tinsel and just walk it up and around the hook all the way up to my thread. It's getting good coverage. Try to cover up all those thread wraps, all those little remaining slivers of foam that are in there. You know, you can use your rotary function, you can palmer by hand. I personally don't care as long as you get the look that you're trying to go for. And once I'm about there, I'm gonna catch that with my thread, give it two or three good wraps, really lock it in and trim that tinsel out. Beautiful. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold one piece of foam over. First will be the red. And I'm gonna lock it in just in front of where I tied it in. And you kind of see it's got like that kind of like bulbous, beetly shape to it. I think that's kind of one of the awesome things going for this fly. And once you lock that red, I'm gonna do the exact same with the black. Try to keep it on that same area. And I mean, shoot, man, like you can literally cut that fly off there and fish it as a beetle, but we're gonna do a couple more things to this one. What I like to do at this point is just fold back to see how much space I'm actually working with because I still need to tie in rubber legs, I still need to tie in a post, and I still need to tie in um, a hackle. So I'm gonna have a little bit of like a void or a little bit of an area in the middle there for that. So what I'll do is actually skip my thread up maybe about half a centimeter and then try to just mat that section down in between and that'll give us a nice little foundation for tying in the following materials. So once we've got that, what I will do first is tie in one rubber leg on each side. Um, this is you know, maybe a little bit easier to do on this pattern than per se, like maybe a chubby Chernobyl or other patterns that have rubber legs going for them. That little bit of a space in between will really keep those legs apart. And then once we wrap that hackle in between them, then they'll really fork out for you. So if it kind of looks a little hairy to start, don't worry, things will kind of get better for you. Keep that in there. And yeah, these rubber legs are going to be probably moving on me a little bit throughout this fly, so bear with me. And once you're happy with, you know, the positioning of your legs, make sure they're on both sides of the fly as opposed to like on the underside or on the top. That looks pretty good there for me. And then, you know, one little, there's a couple tricks, you know, when it comes to dealing with the rubber legs. Uh, you could use like little hair ties or twist twist ties or whatever that looks like. But honestly, for me, part of the fun is dealing with the dealing with the stuff that uh, you got going for you. So I'm going to kind of pinch those back there, try to lay my finger on top and get that post tied in right on top of the shank, trying to keep my thread wraps in between the pairs of legs hoping that that will kind of keep them apart a little bit. And then once you've got your post up top and your legs hanging, lastly, what we're gonna go in with is a Grizzly Hackle. This is a whiting product here. It's perfectly sized for the fly that we're doing, which happens to be a 12. And I'm gonna jam that hackle in between those rubber legs Lock it down with three 
or four pretty solid wraps. Go in, trim my stem out, trying not to trim my legs. And here, what I really like to do is try to grab those back two rubber legs and get two good wraps of hackle. So it really wants to keep that back pair kind of oriented towards the back of the fly. And then now I've got a little bit of separation. I'm going to try to get at least four or five good wraps of hackle in there. I think that's one thing that really separates this fly from a lot of the other terrestrials. You know, a little bit of feather goes a long way. And then I'm just going to go up and over with my thread twice behind, twice in front, and really get that hackle to stay. And then once that hackle's in there, I'm going to go in with my scissors, trim the remaining out. And the fly is pretty much done there. We have a little bit of a, of a haircut to give it. But what I like to do here is just fold everything kind of rearward. Sneak my thread in front. You might have a couple fibers that you're locking in there, but no worries. And then the trusty old whip finish. And on that whip finish, I really like to hold all the materials back as well. Try to be as clean as I can. Tie her off cut my thread and then now a little bit of a trim job so what we have to trim here is our top foam a little bit of the wing a little bit of the legs as well as a little bit of the hackle so what I like to start off with here is trimming my foam I'm gonna get everything out of the way and I'm trying to give this fly a little bit of a lip um, and what I think that does for me or for people who fish this fly is you know terrestrials obviously when they land on the water they're kind of struggling for their life they know they're about to get eaten. So when I land this fly, I give it one little pulse with the rod tip or even just kind of pull my line a little bit. And that kind of gives it a little bit of a water push. Um, what I'll do next is trim my post. So my back post, and you know, try to be mindful of your rubber legs, try not to trim those off too, too early. But I'm gonna trim this post about just short of the length of the hackle. Boom. And the front post, Feel free to keep it funky, feel free to keep it long, but I'm aiming to go about a length or about a one and a half times the length of my hackle. So here I'm not really gonna have to trim that one too much. Just about there I'm happy with. Anything that, any fly that has rubber legs on it, you know, just keep in mind that once you trim them, you can't make them any longer. So I like to air a little bit on the longer side of things here. I'm going to go for about a length of the shank per set of legs. And I'm going to, like I said, air long because you can always make them shorter, but you can never make them longer. And then once that's set, I'm going to flip the fly over. And because we got a couple of those uh, wraps of that um, hackle in there, what I'm actually going to do is go in and just kind of flatten that underside of that body out a little bit of those uh, hackle fibers. And what that'll do is I think it just kind of helps with that fly's floatability, kind of keeps it riding correctly. And, uh, you know, there's nothing worse than a dry fly that kind of lands upside down. So give that a little bit of a haircut. I'm not going to cut it flush by any means. Still have a little bit of fibrous look looking for it or going uh, a little bit of a fibrous look going for it. But, uh, you know, just kind of clean it up a little bit. And that there is the hippie stomper. So uh, tie it up, give it a shot and uh, let us know how you do. Thanks, guys.